Man, it's a beautiful day outside. The birds are singing, flowers are blooming. But it's spring, we totally plan to do this in spring. I, I, I know this kind of ruins the joke a little bit, but I, 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 my mother is very proud of me. Also, you can't even see outside. You're in the middle of a weird dimension thingy. And there goes that opening gag. Also, how'd you get back here? Nah, I never really left. I mean, after you essentially tossed me aside, I sort of started looking for a way out before I figured out that nine miles this way towards the blue swirly dimension area looks exactly like nine miles that way towards the blue swirly dimension area. So I've been here for, well, like about a year now. I'm actually really hungry. And I thought I was directionally challenged. Oh, and feel free to take whatever's in the pantry. I think I've got some Kraft mac and cheese boxes in there. All right, let's just take a look, see. Hortons, a magical staff, the universe destroying properties, bills, the egg libra from Sonic Rush. Egg libra? You know, that actually gives me an idea. Hey, Silver, want to do another collab? I'm making some mac and cheese, and nobody can stop me! Sonic has had a rocky history in his past, and actually, you know what, that's being too generous. To those who are new here, or just need a refresher, last year my buddy Silver and I talked about the best bosses in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, but as we very much made clear both back then and here, that's not always the norm for a franchise with such a convoluted history as this. Sonic has had a ton of games made, which pretty much almost guarantees that it'll have a smorgasbord of bosses that range in quality. Much as I could go on praising the likes of Metal Overlord, sadly, that doesn't mean I can simply ignore the likes of well, everything we're about to talk about. Now, this is probably obvious to some, but we're only looking at Sonic bosses from Sonic games, not crossovers he stars in. So sadly, we're not going to see King Boo from Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games on this list. That joke's gonna make absolutely no sense to the people who haven't seen our first collab. Implying anyone's gonna end up seeing this video, given how YouTube's been as of late. And demonetize! You know, all flaws considered with Sonic Colors, one of the best things it managed to do to the Sonic formula is make underwater levels actually not terrible. And given this concept is something new and fresh for Sonic, it kinda makes sense for a boss fight to work with this mechanic in mind. Problem is, for as generally well executed the underwater mechanics of Colors are, that unfortunately didn't carry over to the underwater centered boss of Aquarium Park, Admiral Jelly. Honestly, beyond the Nega Wisp armor, not many of Colors' bosses are too noteworthy ranging from All Right to Evil Ferris Wheel to this. The fight begins with you guiding a missile over to a guarded lever that sinks the ship down. I have absolutely no idea why this causes Admiral Jelly to pop out, but this causes Admiral Jelly to pop out. Because smooth transitions from one phase of a boss fight to another are just a foregone thing of the past, I guess. I could bring up how the whole guiding a homing missile to a thing to destroy in order to progress the fight feels like a page ripped straight from Mario Galaxy, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with using a similar idea as long as it's done well. Unfortunately, I can't say that's the case here, and that comes down to it being an underwater battle. While Sonic Colors' handling of underwater is one of the better executions in the series, it still feels rather sluggish with slow and somewhat stiff jumping. And when you have to do this while guiding a missile through an obstacle course, it's, um, awkward to say the least. Other than that, this fight is mostly standard affair. Bonk the Admiral when he gets dizzy, guide the missile again, then the second phase hits. The problem with this phase is twofold. The first being the swarm moving way too quickly and just generally being more of an annoyance than anything, but then there's Jelly himself. Even if you have the Drill Wisp, Jelly moves really, really fast. And while there is an icon to show you just where Jelly is, it's still annoying when you're so tantalizing close to hitting him with the Wisp, only for him to speed away in a completely different direction. That said, using the drill makes Jelly go down in only two hits, so at least the fight's a quick one, but it certainly isn't a fun one. Plus, given the fight takes place underwater, you also still need to make sure you don't run out of air. Fortunately, the drowning timer music isn't utterly obnoxious like in most Sonic games, but the point still stands. The fight overall is just really underwhelming, though par for the course with Sonic Colors, admittedly. One might even say, it's a complete wash. Aw, oh, come on, Mibble. There's no need to act like a wet towel over this. Giant laser. Giant what? So remember what I said in our last collab? Silver, you're gonna have to be more specific. Uh, the thing at the end of the Black Doom segment. Oh, you mean this part. What I find weird is Black Doom's vanilla form here is a better fight than his final form. Yeah, exactly that. Though personally, what I find weird is that Shao the Hedgehog rep ended up at number 9 on both lists. Also weird how both entries are Black Doom. Huh, you're right. 
I feel like if someone really wanted to do Metal Overlord wrong in some manner, Devil Doom was the right direction to go. I could probably start with the attacks he has, which involves throwing debris and throwing lasers. The debris can be managed fine, just shoot it over and over again with Chaos Spear and it goes down. And if you're lucky, you might hit the occasional balloon that'll give you rings to maintain your super form. Occasional is the correct word here. But the lasers home in on you and they are fast, meaning you'll get thrown back and hit if you don't go straight for Devil Doom's weak point. Which would be easier to do if Devil Doom didn't teleport the minute you got close to him, making the fight more tedious than anything as the distance he teleports is pretty far. You thankfully have a projectile attack to hit him with, the Chaos Spear, but it only does so much damage and you only have so many rings. You can use your Chaos abilities to help you out, like how destroying debris will fill up your evil meter for some reason, and allow you to use Chaos Blast, which does some decent damage against Devil Doom. That being said, Chaos Control. Chaos Control in boss fights slows down time, and this is really just about useless as it doesn't slow down ring consumption, and Devil Doom will still teleport once you get too close. In fact, it can actually be detrimental in this case because Devil Doom reappearing will now take even longer. All in all, this is a tedious fight of Shadow running back and forth to slap Black Doom in the face on either side of the map while characters give dialogue that's important to the story of Shadow off-handedly. There's also the general question of what Devil Doom is even doing in a Sonic game, when he would fit more in a series like Doom or some other horror game franchise with weird demonic entities. This is a game that has both the Devil and Cream the Rabbit. Yeah, having a bit of an identity crisis there? I'm beginning to miss big. We all do, whether we like to admit it or not. You know, it's a shame that there's not a whole lot of talk about Sonic Advance. I mean, fair, it's nothing too special, but I mean, hey, it's a darn good game that meshes both the classic and modern Sonic styles in a really nice manner. True, but this game kinda got weird with bosses at some points. I mean, we got some well-designed ones, the Egg Snake and the Egg Hammer Tank are both good, but the final level rehashing the first bosses of Sonic 1 and 2? Mecha Knuckles? Why, why Knuckles in particular? But if I can be fair, these are designs that still come out on top when compared to the last boss in the game, the Egg X. If there's ever been a more boring fight in Sonic, it's... Well, okay, it's a little higher on this list, but Egg X is pretty boring regardless, mostly in due to its design and music. Maybe it's just me, but the music really doesn't have the same intensity as other final boss themes the franchise has had up to this point. Like, my mind goes back to the theme for Big Arms in Sonic 3 and how good that theme was as a final boss theme. Here, it just feels underwhelming. Definitely fast, but honestly not very exciting. Maybe it's because it doesn't really pick up much, but I don't know. I just can't get into it. Then there's the design of the Egg X, which is just really lazy. It's basically the same Egomatic Eggman always rides, but adding a giant ring around the vehicle, which has three separate holes one with a laser, one with an arm, one with bombs. That's it. This is the same game where the Doctor designed a car with a giant hammer and the Super Egg Robot, and this is his last bastion a ring. I get that function should be over form, but I'm playing as a collection of small furry animals who can run really fast and take perfect spherical form when they jump. If you're going to go, at least go all the way. Hey, speaking of those holes, let's talk about them and how they fire in a random pattern, meaning that figuring out which attack will come next is always going to be frustrating. The arm is thankfully easy to dodge, so are the bombs. It's the laser I have a problem with. It comes out really, really quickly with very little warning, meaning you have very little time to dodge it should you even see it coming. Eggman also doesn't really live himself open for very long, meaning you have to focus on both dodging the attacks thrown at you alongside hitting the good doctor. Overall, this fight is extremely bland. In areas where it's not boring, it's frustrating. Its design sucks, the boss fight sucks, and it's really disappointing that out of everything Advance had to throw at you in this game, this is the Doctor's supposed latest, greatest creation. Well, let's be fair, Maverick, he does throw that phrase around as if it were a buzzword. I'm fairly certain he considers the coffee he makes in the morning his latest, greatest creation. And you don't? Have you ever made a cup of Tim's? What's a Tim's? You poor, poor American. That hurts even more, given I live in California. Oof. You know, the more I let my mind ponder about it... You make it sound like you think about this often. Point is, while I used to be on the defense about Sonic and the Black Knight, I've come to realize that while it's definitely got some solid elements to it, the game all in all ain't too great, particularly the combat. I used to call the game a high-speed hack and slash, when the more fitting title would be a poorly designed shake weight exercise with some flashiness on the side. Like I said, it's not all bad, but the combat in particular isn't done very well. 
and this is most apparent in any of the bosses that require sword clashes. We could have gone with the Lancelot rematch for how demanding it expects your reflexes to be, but it is a post-game boss, and being fair, once you get used to it, the boss is really easy, so we'll let it slide. On the other hand, there's King Arthur, which is a mandatory fight and one that struggles in working properly. That and getting used to it still doesn't really excuse it for being mandatory. The beginning of the fight starts out pretty okay. There's some tricky dodging stuff, but it's nothing too unmanageable. The problem arises when you're getting into a sword clash with King Arthur. Now, every boss prior to this has had some relatively forgiving sword clashes. There's a bit of a delay before anything happens, but it's still, at the very least, possible to get through them. Which makes Arthur the more infuriating when his sword clashes seem to overpower yours even when you're doing everything right. With other characters, it felt like the sword clashes worked rather consistently, having a certain timing to them. With Arthur, however, it felt like the timing was different. Like, imagine if you were playing through the Fire and Flames on Guitar Hero, starting on easy and slowly ramping up the difficulty, and by the time you hit Expert, the game then basically says, No, forget the guitar, you're on drums now, hit that hi-hat hero. The only thing really saving this fight from getting any higher, though, is that it happens to have one of Crush 40's best pieces playing alongside it, which does help numb the pain a bit. Seriously, Fight the Night is an absolute jam. Silver, are you are you okay? They rode home! They rode home! They rode home! They rode home! <laughs> but Silver... We're not doing Big vs. Chaos 6, the frogging. But it'd be funny. I got the plush frog and six of the Chaos Emeralds and everything. <sighs> Will it please you? If we just do Team Sonic vs. Chaos 4, the holy crap, why do we have to fight this boss three times in it? Okay, it's not as meme-worthy, but, nah, eh, why not? No, but seriously, three times? It's not like the boss fight ever really changes or has you attempting different strategies with the different characters, which wouldn't be too big a problem if Chaos 4 was fun to fight. Like, yeah, the Chaos 6 fight with Big is really dumb, but at the very least, it's short. The Chaos 4 fight you not only do three times, but it's notably longer and thus notably more boring. Most of it is Chaos hiding underwater, only showing up during brief periods to attack. Chaos spends a lot of his time under meaning a lot of the fight is standing around, not really doing a whole lot. Speaking of the water, it acts really weird. Rather than immediately sinking to the bottom, like how the water physics normally acts in Sonic games, even in this game, you more slowly sink in, taking damage when you're halfway through the water. It's really bizarre, and I have to question its point when a simple jump can get you out of there. Rendering this hazard, not at all that hazardous. It's like you're fighting in a lake of jello rather than water. And because of this, it really makes Chaos 4 destroying the lily pad platforms a whole lot less threatening. Like, oh no, there goes a lily pad. Whatever am I gonna do? Wait, Silver, what's with the cross? Eh, uh, what cross? You were gonna make a Jesus joke, weren't you? You're able to stand in the water in this fight, Maverick. This is too perfect an opportunity. There will be no potential blasphemy on this channel. Put it away. You're no fun. Says the one who said no to the frogging. Okay, that's different. You know what, I've got a good way to introduce this boss. Ooh, maybe with a remark about its music? No, no, I was thinking more along the lines of sitting here and doing nothing. R really? Yep, just standing around and not saying a word. Um, uh, okay. Is there a point to this? The Time Eater from Sonic Generations. Now here's a fight that'll really test your patience. While the other bosses and generations have had plenty of clever design choices that made them fun to fight, the Time Eater has the oh-so-wise design decision of having both Modern Sonic and Classic Sonic chase down the Time Eater and being able to hit him whenever the game decides you're allowed to do that. Being able to hit this boss is a crapshoot. You could get so tantalizingly close to actually doing damage to the Time Eater, only for it to randomly fly away with no indication that you did anything wrong. And sometimes you are able to hit him, but I'll tell you this much, it's never gonna be as Classic Sonic. All Classic Sonic is ever good for is being able to collect rings whenever the Time Eater steps out of the vortex. He can't actually do damage to Time Eater himself. I don't know if this is Sega trying to make a statement or something, but if it is, stop it. It's not nice. Classic's a good boy. Ah, and this is one of those fights where nobody really knows how to shut up. Why yes, Silver, I'm very aware that Eggman's attacks look like a homing shot. Why yes, Rouge, I will absolutely be very careful about this. Why yes, Cream Time is slowing down. Thank you for this information that does nothing for me. Remember how slowing down time in Devil Doom's boss fight did nothing? 
For as useless as it was in that fight, at least it was in your control. You had the freedom of simply just not using it. In this fight though, time will slow down, but that's about it. It doesn't really hinder you or anything, your ring count doesn't even decrease, time just slows down, doing nothing but dragging out the fight even more than it's already being dragged out. And Londa forbid you ever do this on hard mode. I remember a time where me and a friend of mine did that and got stuck on this fight for 40 minutes. Got really, really sick of I am all of me after that. What does 40 minutes of fighting the time eater look like? Well, let's see. Remember the summon boss fights in the city of NT? Where? He's packing! I ended NT once and I'll do it again. Make it free to play it won't stop me. <coughs> hey, he, Malv, how, how are you feeling? Better. I've certainly been better but better. Good, good, that's, that's, that's good. Um, hey, we're, we're friends, right? Well, yeah, of course. A and friends would obviously never hurt each other, right? Okay, what's the punchline that's gonna make me comically furious at you? I accidentally found a brought relevance to the Babylon Guardian from Sonic Riders. Oh. I was expecting a lot worse, honestly. You're scary when you take a knee. I know I've talked about this boss before in great length on my worst final bosses list, but Silver wasn't there then, so that should make a notable enough difference. Hello! So the first of many problems with this fight is the story relevancy. As in, he has no relevancy. He kinda just shows up to be the last boss in the Babylon Rogues' story. And even though it's the Babylon Rogues' story, you play as Sonic. RIP. Then there's this guy's design, which, uh, wow, Sonic Team, you guys all went to the Play-Doh factory while you were making this game, weren't you? I mean, I know 3D modeling wasn't your forte at this moment, but this guy just looks silly. An all-powerful genie able to create an almost demonic and rather cool-looking landscape, and he looks like a Razor Jin's frat party roommate. And bringing up a Razor Jin was bad enough. Guess we should be lucky Alf Layla Walayla wasn't on this list. Uh, that's not, that's not foreshadowing, by the way, he's actually not on here. But beyond lack of relevancy and a dumb design, the Babylon Guardian still got a lot going against him. Particularly the fact that there's no way to really lose his boss fight. All of his attacks only stun you or push you back, there's no timer counting down to put you in peril, and you don't even need to win the race to finish the fight. Though all of that doesn't stop this fight from being irritating. Damaging the Babylon Guardian requires you boosting into his lamp, but you'll usually be too low on air by the time you get to him, and before you can get more air, he just nooms on out of there. But since there's no time or anything, it's less of an, oh crap, get back here, and more of a, get back here, and the latter is not a fun response to have. Give Time Eater credit, at least he's designed well and he has relevance to the narrative. This is just a big purple genie man who shows up out of nowhere to give you a hard time and then just poofs afterwards. The magic carpet board he leaves behind isn't even that amazing, all things considered. To be fair, its ability to get you through the flight shortcuts as any character you want is neat. Except the access can do the same thing, it's a better board all around, and can be purchased at any time from the game's shop, so why would you even bother with this thing? Because something, something, a whole new world? I don't want to imagine Sonic singing that song to anyone, but now I have, thanks a lot. Wait, which voice actor? Why do you make me imagine all three? There's something missing, something's not quite right. Anyone who's followed my stuff for a while knew this was coming. I've generally lost count of how many times I've talked about it in a video, so let's get to talking about this. The War of 1812. I mean the second fight between Tails and Eggman and Sonic Adventure 2. Actually, no, I do mean the War of 1812. Wouldn't it technically be the War of 2001? Okay, if you want to get technical, but that's not as funny. Well, let's be fair, you're not wrong. Both are really, really annoying wars of attrition that result in nothing but just running around, shooting your guns a whole lot, and hoping for the best as a really volatile explosive rotates in the middle. Pray to any deity of your choice that you're not near it as it does, and please note that I'm only taking liberties to the knowledge I know of the War of 1812. You know what? Fair point. But anyway, this fight sucks. You're up against an aggressive enemy who's able to spam their battle mode special attacks like there's no tomorrow, all the while you're left with no rings to heal yourself. You are able to shoot the nuclear container thingy in the middle to cause an explosion and hopefully damage the boss, but uh, that can hurt you too. It's a battle that keeps going and going, looping and looping like a merry-go-round until maybe, hopefully, someday, you will end a hit on your opponent. Doesn't help that completing one mode means that the stuff that the boss got in the mode carries over into their boss fight. Meaning, if you got Eggman's armor upgrade in the Dark Story, that's more health you gotta wipe out. Again, 
wouldn't be a problem, except the fight already drags out due to how much nothing happens. And given the circumstances of this fight, with Sonic supposedly having just been killed, you'd think that there'd be a bit more oomph to it all. Tails wants to avenge his best friend's death, and the battle plays out like an ordinary battle mode fight. If you're lucky to get the AI on a bad day, you can get this battle done quickly, but it doesn't change how boring and not good it all is. In January 1815, Admiral Cockburn succeeded in blockading the southeastern coast by occupying... Uh, uh, Canada, Silver? Georgia. Silver, the it's, um... Island, uh, we're... I, I'm, I'm just... Enemy, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna... I'm gonna keep Canada, going now. Good luck with that. Man, I didn't realize this fight broke people like that. Jeez Louise. Lost World, Lost World, Lost World, Lost World, Lost World. But did they ever find it? I mean, they do so in the game's opening. And that's not very lost now, is it? This is a game that, by all intents and purposes, should have been good. But no, but Sonic Team forgot how to keep a train going when they've got something good in their hands and goofed up. And judging the result of forces, it seems they also have the incredible ability to make a train wreck out of a train wreck. Focus, Silver. Well, it's not like they did! Look, just because they did it doesn't mean it's right for you to do it to- You know what, let's just move on. I personally couldn't get into the Deadly Six. I like their designs, but honestly, they more just leave a lot to be desired. They aren't really fleshed out, they aren't really all that funny, they're just not all that threatening as villains, and honestly, Zavik and Master Zick are the only ones that have any real character put into them. Their boss fights left a lot to be desired too, especially in the case of the 3DS version. They're all relatively bleh, but the fight against Zor takes it one step further by being actually painful. Now, I'm not talking figuratively, I mean literally painful. It's a simple enough fight with Zor hiding on one of many owl robots and you using a cannon to find and shoot the one he's on. But the entire issue with this fight comes down to this being a 3DS game. Or rather, a bad 3DS game. Sonic Lost World has an obsession with using the 3DS's gyroscope, but also doesn't know how to use it. Like, at all. The special stages are bad enough, but at least they're optional. This fight, however, expects you to be able to look in all directions while searching for the correct owl robot. So if you're sitting down in a chair or something like that, well, I hope you don't have any spine issues such as scoliosis, because this is only going to make them worse. In my case, at least, I played most of Lost World 3DS on a road trip. And you ever try turning yourself around while seatbelted in just so you can shoot yourself at a stupid owl robot? It ain't fun, and it's dumb game design. And the only thing worse than this fight is the fact you have to do this fight again in the final world. Funny how the fight against the Deadly Six member who doesn't care about anything is the fight that had the least amount of care given. Well, we've taken care of your demon maverick. Which one, the bane of all my videos or the bane on my back? But now, we handle mine. Uh, why is the room getting darker? I have brought up before how Sonic 06 is very interesting to me. There's a lot I want to talk about the game in length when it comes down to it. Like, did you know the version of Sonic 06 we got was not the final one, just the most stable? The same Maverick, what do you believe is the worst boss fight in Sonic 06? I mean, I haven't played the game myself, but from what I've seen and heard, probably the fight against Silver. The Hedgehog, I mean. And to be fair, fair arguments can be made for that. It's not clear how exactly one could beat Silver, and he can cause several game-breaking occurrences to appear, such as locking you in one place without allowing you to leave, meaning you're stuck there forever, or just forcing you out of the boss fight. But the funny thing is, is that this boss fight never frustrated me outside the first time I fought him given his workaround. Silver's gotta look out for each other, I guess. But that said, what would you say is the worst boss in the game? Well, I certainly can't say the fight is as broken as Silver, but I can tell you this much. It's just as frustrating when I first fought Silver, it remains as frustrating during repeat fights, and there sure ain't a feasible workaround this time around. Ladies and gentlemen, the second phase of Iblis would personally like to welcome you to die. I is that a worm? The first form of Iblis looks humanoid, and in looking at its final form, it still remains humanoid. Why is it suddenly a worm? Man, worm, man. I, I don't get it. I, I, I do not get it. But you see, Maverick, that is only the opening of the volcano as we dive into the lava. The fight works like this. You have a series of platforms that you need to cross so you can hit this light sphere that lures Iblis over. After that, you perform a homing attack. Rinse and repeat two more times and the fight is done. The only problem is that the platforms appear in segments and they take forever to appear! Jeez Louise, this fight is just waiting, waiting, more waiting, and Iblis occasionally making an attack that will actually accomplish anything, like destroying a platform that's nearby you. 
Ibles does very little, and that's even in comparison to his other two fights, where he still does not a whole lot. This fight bothers me so much more than Silver! I get it, that fight is broken and arguably more broken than Iblis, but I have reason to believe that it very well could have worked in concept if certain bugs were just fixed. Here, even if the bugs involved with this fight were fixed, I honestly don't see how this fight could be that good, considering a lot of what's wrong with this fight is how long it takes to even get to Iblis, something that really doesn't have anything to do with how buggy the fight is. And you have to fight him. Twice. In the exact same fashion. Sonic 06 really isn't that good a game. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and skedaddle before Maverick haphazardly shoots me into the sky again. Maybe there's a door here somewhere. This has been Black Mage Maverick alongside Silver, and until next video, have a nice day everyone. Oh, and I never did invite him to my next birthday party. That's what happens when you shoot your friend INTO THE SKY!